Hello, Paris Symposium 2020. I'm Mindy Doe Carpini, and I'm the head of UX engineering for Search and Assistant at Google. Today, I'm going to be talking about why prototyping should be a key part of your machine learning product development process. But first, I'll briefly explain a little bit about what I do and how my discipline fits in. So, I am a UX engineer. Okay, what does that mean exactly? Well, UXEs like myself use our strong technical skills to develop solutions to user-facing problems. Over the years, I've done this for a variety of companies, technologies, and design spaces, everything from websites to applications, operating systems, mobile devices, and a wide range of hardware platforms. Now, machine learning. Often UXC roles include creating prototypes, but I want to reiterate, prototypes do not just belong to UXEs. We have a broad audience here, so I'll describe a prototype for those not in the know. A prototype is an early version of a product or a feature built scrappily with the intention of gathering information, testing ideas, and answering questions. Here is the truly exciting part. The broad range of available prototyping tools and methods means this key part of the process is accessible to everyone on your team. Let's go deeper on why this is for machine learning for a moment. Remember, your systems are predictive and may change and hopefully improve over time. Some much longer way of saying the outcomes are not 100% predictable, making prototyping all the more important for your products. All that aside, in my experience, the technologies are going to change, but the goal always remains the same, solve user problems. For that, it's important not to forget the user-centered design practices and tools that have worked before. Let me start out by laying some grounding principles I and my team adhere to when prototyping anything using a completely ridiculous product, the cookie detector. Cookie detector will answer with 100% certainty whether the cookie before you is oatmeal chocolate chip or oatmeal raisin. Clearly a top user issue of our time. We'll start off by saying the fidelity of the prototype should match the fidelity of the problem. While your questions and ideas are still broad, like does anyone even find this valuable? Low fidelity options are going to be your best bet. Creating wireframes and lightweight prototypes using tools like ProtoPy, Figma, or even paper can be your best place to start. Try a simple triptych here. User holding up the cookie detector app, pointing it at trays of cookies, receiving a result. Show it to your users and ask, hey, is this valuable? Once you start to solidify those ideas and you've moved into things like, the users understand how to properly focus on the tray of cookies, that's when you want to increase the depth of your technical stack. So we also like to say that even a failed prototype is going to be a success. In fact, this is part of why we make prototypes. Failing earlier, faster, and cheaper allows you to make those bad ideas go away or prove another path is going to be better. If a feature is going to take six months from research to design, that is five months too late to find out you were wrong about the product or the feature. In this case, congratulations, Hero. You saved your company all that valuable time because you built a prototype to answer the very important question, does anyone even want a cookie detector? Finally, prototyping can be a great way to answer any number of questions, but before you dive into that deep end, you must know the question you're trying to answer. It can be as broad as, does anyone find this cookie detector useful? Or as tactical as, the users like the celebratory noise the cookie detector plays for chocolate chips. I know I would. Once you've got that question nailed down, you can start to gauge the fidelity and the tools you're going to need to answer it. With that last grounding principle, let me cleanly lead into the next part of the talk, a deeper and more serious dive into how prototypes have been used to answer the shoulds and coulds of product development with two real life case studies. Let's start out with should we, since this is where your product journey should start. 
At this stage in the game, your goal is going to be to minimize the investment on your path to answers. Unfortunately, no one will ever come up and actually ask you, should we do this? And remember, defining that question is critical. I use should we as a placeholder for a range of questions you should be asking, like, does this product meet an actual user need? Does this work for different groups of people in different scenarios? Did you make any assumptions in your design, like a dependence on an internet connection? How about, do we expose any ethical issues or privacy sensitivities? Let's look at that case study for personalized recommendation experiments. Now, I don't have to tell you, creating systems that can give users personalized recommendation means developing a deep technical infrastructure, sophisticated machine learning models, carefully managed data sets, AKA months and months of work. We already mentioned that would be bad because a ground rule is that you want to fail fast. Fear not though, there is a shortcut. Wizard of Oz is a super lightweight method used extensively by Google user experience engineers in which a real life human working behind the scenes takes the place of that time intensive system. In personalized recommendation experiments, user researchers can ask study participants to share information ahead of the study about their preferences. Then we use that information to pre-populate prototype screens with optimal choices. My personal technology choices here are Firebase and update triggers with a nice vanilla JavaScript front end, but there are many methods that will let this work. Back to our study. Our wizard here would observe the choices a user speaks or chooses and react appropriately. Wait, they said blueberries, quick, trigger that blueberries screen. And presto, instant personalization for interaction and product feedback on a high fidelity interface with a low fidelity technical personalization system answering the question of, should we? Moving along, I said there were two broad categories of questions, so here comes the second. In resource-constrained product development teams, and I think we can honestly say they all are, this set of questions is gonna come after you've confirmed the direction is sound through early concept prototyping. Now, could we is going to come into play. This is my shorthand for open technical questions the team has to answer including some that are very specific to machine learning, such as, can the team create a model that can reach the accuracy needed to meet the user need? Where did the data used to train the model come from? Are there any biases in the data that we need to mitigate? And what kinds of errors does the model typically make? Our case study here involves the AIY Project's vision kit. One of the demos the team wanted to include was an image classifier trained on the ImageNet data set that was designed to identify a thousand different types of objects. The demo involved pointing a camera at an object and returning a list of what the model guessed it was seeing. In the team's early testing of their hardware prototypes, they depended on off-the-shelf parts like a Raspberry Pi and a standard USB camera because, Reminder, they started by identifying the key question to answer with their prototype, which was how does the image classifier perform? Building hardware devices from scratch was not key to the question, so this was an ideal place to take a shortcut. Back to our case study, what was the outcome? Well, the team found that while the model mostly performed well, it would also produce some interesting side effects. For instance, the model was convinced it had found a bobsled in a tech company meeting room. While these results were generally not problematic and non sequitur at worst and totally hilarious at best, it became clear that addressing this was going to be important for a good user experience. Luckily, the team was able to catch it early and fail fast. Now that we've examined those two case studies and some grounding principles, Let's put it all together. What have we learned? Well, prototypes should be a part of any complete product development toolkit, including and especially one with a machine learning component. 
Prototypes are a valuable tool that can validate use cases and enable broader exploration. With a groundswell of tools available, prototyping is accessible to everyone on your team. Your prototype should always start with a question that you're trying to answer. From there, you can pick a tool chain and a technical fidelity. Prototypes make failing faster and cheaper and catch problems early for a better, more successful product experience. Oh, and one more thing. Beware of those lurking bobsleds and avoid tricky oatmeal cookies. Thanks everyone and enjoy the symposium.